I kind of forgot about these. I can just go to the riverbank and make a lure and fish with it. And these are great. I love these. I'm over half certain that I know what I'm going to make when I get there. I think it's going to be an inline spinner. Might turn it into a tail spinner. You see, I'm bringing like this big bag of bird shot. There's a few clevises in here and there's an assortment of spinners. So it's it's definitely going to be something with a spinner on it. I'm sitting here looking at all of my tools thinking of what to bring. Been doing this for a while now. Here's what's going in the bag. Paint! All of those colors. These are the colors I'm going with. I'm not even going to tell you what they are. Well, silver, platinum, black magenta, scarlet halo, uh, yellow ochre, and red violet. I look like I'm advertising this. A straight edge. A saw. Pole saw. We're going with five minute epoxy for this one. Haven't even opened this bottle of DevCon yet. And I'm bringing some stuff to put in the five minute epoxy clear coat. I don't recommend five minute epoxy clear coats on lures. This is, ex that's, this isn't really even fun to put on a lure. It dries so fast and it's stressful and, but whatever, we'll make it work. Hey, friends. And in case the airbrush paint doesn't suffice, I got, I'm bringing some of these. I probably won't use these because this is a 15 minute drying time at least and it says two hours to handle, but a lot of the time they're wrong on their own products. Yeah, it dries to the touch in 30 minutes on the black, dries to the touch in two hours on the silver. A couple paint brushes, one more paint brush for finer detail work, a pencil, lineman pliers, just because I feel better as a person when I have my lineman pliers on me. Wire bending pliers, better wire bending pliers, these are nitpicks. A manual drill bit set. I'm not bringing the Keter today, just gonna do it by hand. A pair of fine nosed vice grips. Pliers, four in the hand, raspy tool. This is better for wood and removing material. Then I have a file to kinda finish what I did off with this tool. Sponge block sandpaper. Sandpaper, sandpaper, baking soda, a new fresh container. Excuse me, I'm spilling everywhere. Super glue, as you do. Straight edge, a pen, 10 millimeter eyes from Dead Meat Custom, 3 8 inch diameter Forstner bit. And I'm gonna just hold it by hand and twist it against the bait to make the eye sockets for those beautiful Dead Meat Custom 10 millimeter eyes. This bag, this chisel, the Delphino 3 with a fresh blade. I'm gonna put it in this bag so I don't cut it open. Ooh, I have a sheath for this. Where'd it go? This came with a sheath. This is perfect. I can walk around in the woods with a Delphino 3 on my hip. My pokey thing, a sanding stick, and wire. What else? I'm gonna look around the shop a bit more, make sure I'm not forgetting nothing. I believe we're set. I got a new chair, by the way. Not falling out of this one. Let's meander our way to the river. I'm feeling good about this. Ooh, I kind of want to take that. All right, this is going in the bag, but I'm not going to explain anything. See you on the river. Oh, wait, no. Got my Delphino 3. This might be the nicest day I've ever experienced in my life. This is... This is a very nice day. I do prefer a little nip in the air, but enough about my preferences. Let's get to the spot. Okay, all set up down here. I have to go hunt for material, wood, bark. There's the old trusty cottonwood bark tree right there. Cottonwood bark tree. Here, let's go see how it's doing. How you doing? I see you got a fungus. Man, that's a big tree. Okay. Let's, uh, oh. There's a ton of bark right there. I'm making an inline spinner, so I want stability up and down. So I need something buoyant and put a lot of lead in the belly. Cottonwood bark is very buoyant. 
let's use it. I'm just gonna take this. Watch out for the broken glass. Okay, it probably is gonna be about that thick, whatever the thickness of that is. I want one that's like that big. It's gonna be kind of tall, I think. Mind frame. Sorry, this is gonna be a possibly not very focused video, so. You can't just score cotton wood bark and snap it. It's not drywall, it has grain still. Look how fine the grain is. That's good stuff. I like cotton wood bark, man. Oh, I forgot how much this hurts my knees and feet and stuff. I need to like make a chair for out here. All right, I think I need to get a pencil out. We have to draw our bait. Ooh, I got beef jerky. Yeah. That was a misfire. Ooh, I did bring this to work on so I don't have to work against a stone. That's, that's kind of nice. Okay, found the toughest thing to find in that bag, the pencil. Took a little while. Shad body. Boom. I hope it's not too bright. It is so bright out right now, it's, it's kind of hard to take video, but bet you've never heard that excuse before. It's just too bright out to do this video. So I don't have a bandsaw right now. So I'm just gonna hack off straight chunks. And now, <laughs> and now, uh, I'm gonna use the four in the hand like a cheese grater. I'm gonna have to cut this down thinner too. I just realized how much that's off. When you look at the whole bait there, that comes up too much. That gets too narrow right there, just on one side. So take material off an entire side. It's kind of required at this point. After being here for a bit, there has been zero fish jumping. No signs of life. That was not an easy cut. Whew. And I was a little off, but I don't care. I'm not doing that again. You can really see the grain structure of cottonwood bark now though. That's a pretty cellulose, you know? All right, next step is to taper the bait from nose to tail, like the bird's eye view of the bait from the top. But I have to do it with this, like this, for a long time. After painstakingly shaping that out by hand for hours, I'm on to carving the chamfers of this bait already. Man, that carves like nothing. There's just nothing there, resistance-wise. Should bring some of that home with me. Use it on some builds in the, in the shop, you know? Not just out here. I think it's worthy of the shop, too. Even though Tupelo Wood's the best. Dang, I forgot I had this sanding sponge, too. I came prepared, this bait's gonna look nice. If I paint it nicely. Not bad for the river bank. Let's do what else, or whatever else we need to do. Sorry, this is not a flattering shot. My bad, get you guys up here. Borderline unnecessarily sharp chisel. Kinda scared right now. And I have to mortise out a hole, cause I, I bring a palm sander, but not a hand drill, so I can just drill out a hole and put lead in it. So I gotta mortise out a drill, a hole, for the lead. And this hole is no joke. It's gonna be pretty big. Is mortise a verb or just a noun? You know, the square hole is a mortise. Maybe it's just a noun and I can't use it as a verb. What have I done? Oh, I hope I can fit enough lead into this thing to where it sinks. Really hope it's gonna sink. The spinner is gonna go off the nose though. It's just gonna be in the front. And not only does it have to sink, it has to keep the bait stable as you retrieve it. Here's a technique for you. I'm just stabbing a bunch of holes in it to break up the grain. And eventually it just starts falling out and you can go as deep as you want. But yeah, I'm gonna be doing this for a while. But we'll get this hole mortised out. What a word, I love that word. 
and then we'll put lead in it. One day. Wait, I didn't show you guys the time. 11.06, good thing I brought beef jerky. Oh, my butt, man. There is a hole that consumed 20 minutes of my life. Let's see how much lead fits in it. Is that much enough? I'm gonna hope so. Bob Saget, my super glue bottle is clogged. Oh, squirt it all over me. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, I just like super glue, you know? Man, I wish I had accelerator. Sprinkling baking soda is kind of like accelerator, really. Pardon me, I'm just gonna enjoy the view for a little bit. This is turning out fantastic so far. It feels like there's possibly not enough weight in it. I don't know. We'll see. I gotta drench this whole thing in super glue, but I wanna do that after I get the wire in it. So I have something to hold on to while I'm drenching it in super glue. So let's get the wire in it. And weirdly enough, I have to come from the top because I forgot to do the, the wire before putting lead in it. I was just so lead happy today. I just went straight to it and forgot the process of lure making, even though that's my life. Forgot who I am, forgot my purpose on this earth to make a lure correctly and share it with you guys. Just forgot. Whoops. It's getting straight though. This is, this isn't bad. It's kind of a dirty cut, but it's a straight cut. Ooh, that came off. It started out wonderfully straight, but it just, it just veered off to the side. <laughs> That's not straight, but you just watch, it won't matter. Where's my wire? There it is. Most of the time spent on these riverbank builds is just digging through that bag. Gotta make the rear treble hook line tie. Hook hanger, treble hook line tie, wow. That was a new low right there. I, I just did it real quick. It's that, I hope this fits in immediately. That'd be nice, because then I could show you guys. Oh, it does, wow. Clean as a whistle. Look at that. Line through. Get that magical dust in there. Just gonna finish up the super glue bath on this bad boy real quick. This is going fantastically. Now I'm going to use this 3 8 inch Forstner bit and turn it by hand and make a little eye socket spot. This might be the first creek bank build with an eye socket. Making history on my knee right here. Do you see that wood grain? It's like, should I paint that? And the answer is no, but I'm going to paint it a little bit. I'm going to leave some wood grain exposed. I believe though. Also, I'm in debate on whether or not I want to put a bottom hook hanger, treble hook on this. The issue is that it would have to go right there because I didn't bring a wire down for one right here inside of that hole. So it'd have to go right there, which would look stupid. Let's, let's be real, that would look dumb. That's too far back. So I'm just gonna do one off the back and pray to the fishing gods, you know? I'm gonna give this bait a quick, dirty, I'm not gonna put too much thought into the paint job as I paint it. I'm just gonna throw some paint on here. Starting with detail black magenta. That is one we have never started with. Thin coats. It's non-toxic. Drunk people pee in that river all the time. I probably just made my, my brush dirtier actually. That river polluted my brush. Anyway, I'm just gonna brush paint on this bait until it's done and I'll show you what I did because brushing paint on a bait for 30 minutes is not, probably not 30 minutes, probably like 20, but not entertaining. No, 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 no. That certainly gave it a beautiful shimmer though. Dang, that platinum, look at that. And that is it, that's all that I wanna, I, bleh, 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 bleh. that right there is it. That's all that I wanna paint it. I put a little bit of red towards the head, the platinum, shiny, those bars, it's kind of like a bluegill. That side's a lot brighter. Recently, Matt from Dead Meat Customs gave me these eyes, 10 millimeter, 3 8 inch pretty much, pretty much. There's some good ones in here, one sec. Let me pop them on here real quick. I'll show you. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not bad for the riverbank, eh? I mean, it's not finally finished or anything, but not bad. Okay, fun part, five minute epoxy time. DEVCON, 1500 PSI, five minute epoxy. 
That's the stuff. I'm gonna mix it up real quick here on this surf, this plastic surface on my baking soda container. It looks like it prides itself on drying really clear though. Clear can mean two things, completely translucent with no color at all, or translucent with a yellow tint. <laughs> the epoxy world thinks that's the same thing. Sometimes. Not all epoxies, sometimes. Oh, it's pretty thin. This is five minute. They've stepped up their game. Oh, my glitters. Where are you? I can't be doing this with five minute. Everything needs to be ready beforehand. Just get a little dash in there. It's in there. Where's my brush? Oh, it's right there. Okay, I'm gonna be ready to put this on very soon. Already starting to thicken. All right, that's enough. Because when you brush it on, it mixes it in there too a little bit. So lather it on there. Don't have a rotisserie out here, obviously. So I will be using my hand as a rotisserie. I just use the outlet on my truck and set a rotisserie up back there. I'm starting to hear a lot of movement in the water. Things are picking up a bit. Ah, oh, this smell reminds me of my early days of lure making. Epoxies. I don't use many epoxies anymore. Where is my, this thing, okay. Just popping bubbles. Wow, that clear coat looks fantastic, actually. What the heck? You guys seeing that clear coat? That's, that'll do, you know? <laughs> now if I can just get the hardware and everything to turn out perfectly on this bait, and hopefully it sinks and stuff, we'll have a nice bait. I do need to check and make sure that it sinks before I tie anything off up here, because what you can do is add lead to the nose of this bait to get it to sink and run correctly. I don't have any with me. I'd have to go home and get that, which is like borderline disqualification stuff. This is a riverbank build, but I don't care. I'll, I'll go get it if it needs it. Look at that. It's not tied off, but I'm about to go see if it sinks. It is really close. It doesn't, it doesn't sink. One little old bullet weight would solve that issue. Do I have that in my truck? I might, ooh. The solution might be in my truck, which makes this a legit one day riverbank build to catch. And if not, that's fine too. Don't, don't worry about it. We'll go back home. <laughs> Success. I got a bullet weight. I just hope the the internal hole is larger than the outside diameter of the wire You know look at that It fits. Hallelujah. That's definitely gonna sink now. So all right this tying this off shouldn't be a problem ain't bad at all I mean, it's it's beating up my fingers a little bit But last thing to do is to install this feathered treble hook that a subscriber sent me Thank you for tying me that and sending it to me person who did that greatly appreciated The hook is a little bit small for this size of a bait, but I'm gonna work with it because I want to use it There's my split rings I love beef jerky man. Got some Bass Pro Shops extreme performance series split rings I just like them because they're oval. I think the oval split rings are more for like a crankbait situation the front hook hanger hanging off but whatever man i got a different use for you clear coat was a bit sticky and i just put a fingerprint in the bait but that's how i signed it let's just say that signed it with my thumbprint bait's done oh by the way this funky blade that i put on the front i don't know if this works on an inline spinner or not and i just totally permanently put it on this bait so we'll find out but here's the finished bait starting from the back it's a lovely feather treble you tied dude or ma'am, I don't know who tied that. That's thumbnail side. <laughs> Bullet weight, beads, clevis, in front of a rivet, so this thing's gonna spin just ridiculously free. That's like putting it on a bearing kind of stuff. And look at that clean line tie I got. <laughs> That's cleaner than what I do in the shop, so. There's the bait, let's tie her up, let's fish. I need to remember that I'm not in a hurry. I don't need to cast this around structure. To begin with, I got a lot of time left today to fish. Let's not just lose it right off the bat. You guys all know how the last riverbank build went. Let's not repeat that. First cast with the inline spiver. Wow, I cannot talk today. The inline spinner riverbank build. Yeah, I feel that blade. That feels good. That don't look too bad either. It is doing what it's supposed to. Nice. 
I'll fish here for a nice long while. There's a good chance I could get a pike or a walleye or possibly a bass even, so. Like that. Whoa, that looked like a, oh, that scared me. I wish I had that front treble hook. Whew. I am a little bit more confident with that white treble hook though, the feather. Like that's a targeting area, you know? Looks good, feels good. I'm gonna pack up my bait making stuff real quick so I don't have to do that if I leave. Another perfect example of responsibility making its way into this channel. Trying to set good examples for you fellas. Yeah, this is one of them baits where it's just, how many times can you cast? You might catch something. Especially without a front treble hook. Well, I'm gonna go to a different spot just because I want to. I think I could catch something here. It's just it's really slow and I just want to fish somewhere else. So see you there. Well, folks, you might have guessed it. But I'm at Jesse's. Let's just try to get a bass with it first. If we do, in a good amount of time, we'll uh, go to the river. It's a bait that runs towards the surface. I'm not gonna snag it at the river. There's no way. Let's catch a fish here first though. We're at the river. Let's get on our way and make this official. If we could just get a nice little smallmouth, real quick, and then a pike, and then a bigger pike, and then a five pound smallmouth, and then a 10 pound wiper, and then a 15 pound bowfin. Oh, I got one. Finally. It's official. That bass was spinning. You see that? Smallmouth, like inline spinner baits that you make on the riverbank. <laughs> Actually, that's a largemouth. I don't know why I said smallmouth. I'm sorry. I was expecting a smallmouth here. Been here for about an hour. This is the only fish we got, but I just realized the technique. So let's see if we can get a few more. If not, I'm going to go home, eat, and then find a different spot to fish. Be free. One day. What a coincidence. Debo's here. I'm going to stay here. Just finish the day here. <laughs> he sounds so happy about I, it. I, I caught one bass today. I've been uh, fishing you, all day. <laughs> Did you? A four, a four younder. A four? A four. A four? Four? Exactly. Four, three. four three. Wow, where'd you catch that? Congratulations, Randizzle. Four pounder already. That's I, wow. I ask, ask him what he caught yesterday. What'd you catch yesterday? I caught a, a fiver yesterday. Are you kidding me? What? Did we just get one yesterday? It's the next day. It's the morning. Eight o'clock. I'm at a network of ponds now. A large bass was ca caught out of here just recently, so that, that's why I'm here. Let's go. And congratulations, Berkeley. That was a that was a fantastic bass. Six pound bass. She's eight years old. Congratulations. <laughs> if these bass are biting, this shouldn't take long. It'll turn into more of a size thing. I love this pond. <laughs> Yeah, that did not take long. Not the smallest bass either. Fantastic fish right there. Looks like they're uh, they're appreciating the spinner. You got hooked real good. Right in that cartilage. Be free. Got another. It's weird, I'm having to like set the hook with this, with a treble hook. It's another good bass. Let's not put your hand in front of a loaded pole like that. Like these are, the last one was over two pounds. This is probably a little less. Yeah, I was 99% certain. If I come here, I'm gonna catch some good fish, so. I know it's a pond, it's not a river, it's not a lake. But I stopped caring about that once I started making lures and needing to catch fish on them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just nice to catch fish. It's always nice to catch fish. There we go. Yep. 
decent bass. Not too shabby. I just want a five pounder, that's all. I don't even have a scale, I just want a fat bass, man. Let's get under this fence. Oh, I had a hit right there. Big old hit and a miss, once again. Oh, I missed that one too. That might have been a crappie. Felt like I ripped the lips out of it. This treble hook should do for a crappie. There we go. I think that's better hooked. That's not small. Some whatever decent pounder that is, I don't know. Maybe not, not three, but two and a half. Be free. Got one. Barely felt this fella. And he's barely hooked. Bottom jaw. On the outside, with one point. I'm just kidding, he's already in. There's, it's not suspenseful at all. Look at that fella. Boop, boop. Healthy. Boop, boop. Never hooked large marge that day. No five pounders, but I caught more fish than that. I just thought you guys got the gist. Maybe I caught one dink that day. I caught a lot of good fish, but yeah, it's a very, very successful riverbank build. Even a successful one day riverbank build. That was a good, good successful video. Feels good, man. You don't get that every time on this channel. Feels good. I always end up being kind of surprised by how much lead you need to put in an inline spinner with a, a fish shaped body. You need a surprising amount of lead for those baits. Got another one of them lessons under my belt. I don't know if I learned anything from it, but we'll see. And. Thanks for watching the whole freaking thing. You're still here. Video's over. On to the next bait. This is a very nice day. Clean as a whistle. Hey, fam. Get that magical dust in there. Drunk people pee in that river all the time. Here's a technique for you. I love beef jerky, man. 